designandmake.com. Let's have a look at level clipping and see how you can use it to expand the possibilities of your clip art. Let's start out with the basics. Level clipping is a level effect, much like mirror merges. As I mentioned, this is a level effect and can be accessed by right-clicking on one of your levels. Now this effect affects everything that's on that level. So in this case, you need a closed vector and a piece of 3D clip art. Select the closed vector and right-click on clipping. And anything outside of that closed vector will now be clipped away. One of the great things about this is that it's non-destructive. It doesn't actually edit your clip art. So once you do this, you can move your clip art within that level and you'll only see the bits that aren't being clipped away. My top tip is be sure to always rename your level Now that you know the basics, let's look at some tips and tricks. In this first example, we're going to take this ooey gooey messy pizza slice and make it look like somebody's taken a bite out of it. That's one of our new models from Design and Make. Now if I go ahead and tile my views, you'll see that in my 2D view I have a vector already created that looks like it has a bite out of it at the bottom. Well, because it's a closed vector, if I select that and go over to my pizza level and I right click on that and go down to clipping, You'll see that in the 3D view, it now looks like my pizza has a bite out of it. That's because everything outside of this vector shape has now been clipped away. Now again, like I had mentioned, this is a non-destructive way of editing your models. So I can go ahead and select my pizza slice and move it with inside that vector. And I can move that bite mark to pretty much anywhere as I'd like to on that particular model. And now that I'm all done and I'm happy with it, what I should do is make sure that I rename my pizza level to pizza bite dash clip. And now I'll always remember that this level is a clipping level. One other thing I need to point out is that if you move your clipping vector around, that doesn't change the result in the 3D view. If you do intend on moving your clipping vector around, what you need to do is go over to your level and right click on it, turn off clipping, and then turn clipping back on again with the vector in its new location. And you'll see that in my 3D view now, that has changed. So that's a really important thing to keep in mind. In this next example, we're gonna start off with this oval plaque and it's on level one all by itself. If we take a look at this oval plaque, it's kind of interesting. It has a very low center and then also has this very aggressively recessed edge around the outside. And this looks really great, but it does cause us some problems when we're trying to put something inside of this dish. So if we look straight down on this, and we go to our clip art tab, if we choose one of the dogs from our Dogs of the World number four collection, maybe the King Charles, and we bring that into our 3D view, and we size her down, and we press H on the keyboard to flip horizontally, and we position the dogs where we want it to be, you'll see right away where the problem arises. Right here, the fur merges up through this aggressive dish shape around the outside of this plaque. And we could use a fade for that. But the problem with a fade is if we decided to move this dog elsewhere in this dish, we'd have to adjust that fade every time. So why don't we just clip off the extra information we don't need? So looking at this particular oval plaque, there's a nice place up here that we could actually clip from. It's nice and flat. So if we go to our drawing tab and then to our 2D view, and we'll put it in an oval. We'll just snap it to our center and we'll just drag it out and sit it on top of that light area of our oval dish. That looks good. We'll close that down. Now what we can do is go to our modeling tab and we can add in a brand new level. So let's just right click on top of this level here and we'll say insert a new level and we're going to call this oval. And then we're going to take that vector and right click because it's already selected. And we're going to go ahead and turn that into our clipping vector for this level. If we take a look in our 3D view, nothing's really happened. That's because that clipping only affects what is on that particular level. So if we go ahead and drag our King Charles head up in there, you'll see what happens. It gets clipped off, but also because this is an add level, we need to actually change the combine mode of this full level. So if we click on that, and then right click 
go to combine mode and change it to merge, you'll see that the King Charles head fits in there perfectly. And that works really well because this model will be clipped to that actual oval. It doesn't matter where I put it in this dish, it'll actually be clipped off appropriately. Now also what I could do is I could go to my clip art tab and I could bring in a different dog and I could position it on the other side. And because that clipping vector affects everything that's on that level, then you'll see that that dog is clipped as well. So I can actually have this plaque set up for multiple dogs and just need to hide and show the dog that I'd like to see in the actual dish. Okay, for our last example, we're gonna take some of the models from our waving bear sign model project and create a nice welcome sign. And I've already done this ahead of time to save us a little bit of time. So if we go to our modeling tab, you'll see that I have some components here. So the first thing we see now is the log slice. And if we add in the happy bear, it's been merged in and scaled appropriately. The shape height has been to look really good. Then we'll go ahead and throw in a bear paw. Again, it's been merged in and tilted slightly. So if we take a look at this actual properties for this paw, you'll see that it has a shape height, no base height, but I've tilted it into place. And then what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've copied that paw to the other side. So these are the exact same paws, just one on each side of the actual layout. And that looks pretty nice, I think, in the end. Now, looking at it straight on, it does look okay. But if I tilt it up on its edge, you'll see that it has some problems. Because I've added a tilt to these paws, essentially what I've done is added a wedge of material that has a flat top underneath my paw, and it ends up giving me these really hard edges at the top. Well, there's a way that we can fix that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look straight down on this particular layout, and then we're gonna create a brand new level. We're gonna right click on this level. We're gonna say insert a new level. And we're gonna rename this paw dash clip. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this paw up to that level, and then we're gonna hide the rest. So right now we just have this paw all by itself. Now let's just go ahead and remove that tilt from it. We don't need that anymore. And we'll lay it back right on the modeling plane the way it should be. Now, how are we gonna be able to get this to look better and actually look like the paw is wrapping around the sign? Well, to do that, we can clip a dome-shaped model that will give us that shape that we need, and then we can add this paw to that and then merge in that whole level into our final composition. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's go to our clip art tab. And with all of the free content you get with your software, vCarve, Desktop Pro, or Aspire, you get a set of domes and dishes. So if we select that, you'll see we have some great domes, some of these are round top domes, we have flat top domes, rectangle squares, and all kinds of things. But the one that we wanna look at is the one right in the middle, the dome dish. So if we double click on that, then we go over to our modeling tab, and we change this to an add component then it will actually add to the bare paw. So now we can size this down and we can place it where we want it to be. Now for me, what I want to do is I want the bare paw, the bottom of the paw to sit on this edge. And then as the paw sort of wraps around my sign, it's gonna get higher. So it needs to go up towards the center of this dome. And there we have it. So now what we need to do is we need to clip this dome. Well, the easiest way to do that in this particular layout is to go to our 2D view select our bear paw, and then choose to create a vector boundary from that selected component. So if we click that, you'll see that our software has created a vector that's the same shape as that paw. So if we select that, and we right click on our paw dash clip level, we can go to clipping, and you don't see anything change in the 2D view, but if we tile our views, you're gonna see what happens in the 3D view. So if we go ahead and hide and show that dish, you'll see what happens. And now what we can do is we're going to merge this level. So change the combine mode to merge. And then when we bring back our first level, we'll see what happens. Now the nice thing about that paw is we've alleviated some of that hard edge on the top. And it does look like that paw is actually going around that particular sign. Now if we're not quite happy with the location of that dome, 
it's great. We can just select it and we can move it around a little bit, maybe to get that paw to wrap up a little bit better. And then we can change the shape height of that particular dome to be maybe a quarter inch. And then we can see what happens. That actually makes too much of a difference. Let's make it 0 0.3. Let's close that down. Let's maximize this view. And you'll see that now we have this actually wrapping around the bottom of that sign, nicely opposed to this other paw that looks like it's very sharp and heavy. I hope you found some of that useful. Now I'm gonna be holding a live question and answer on Design & Make's Instagram feed on April the 15th at 3 p.m. UK time. If you have any questions at all, please bring them along with you, or if you'd like to, you can add them in a comment below and I'll answer them during that question and answer. Now, if you happen to be catching this after the event, then please still add your comments below. We'll be looking for them and we'll answer them as soon as we can. Thank you very much for watching. Have fun, keep making, and most importantly, be safe.